this little guy is probably the scariest application on your Mac. But behind it hides an incredible amount of power. In this video, I'll show you how I personally use the terminal in my day-to-day -day work and hopefully by the end, you'll feel less intimidated and maybe even willing to give it a try. Let's start with the main question that's probably on your mind right now. Why should you care about the terminal? Think of it as the gateway to automate tasks, build custom tools, and create workflows that will target your specific needs as a user. The terminal on its own is very powerful, but for me, what truly unlocked its potential was Homebrew. Homebrew is a package manager that lets you install and manage all sorts of uh, utilities and applications. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but first let me show you some of the stuff you can do with it. Uh, what you'll see is uh, scripts that are custom built to fit my needs, but you don't have to be a programmer to build them. We live in the age of uh, AI, so why not take advantage of it? Of course, if you know how to code, you'll be able to build bigger and better tools than anything any AI can uh, spit out. For these scripts though, I use the ChatGPT. I'm in the process of learning the basics of uh, Python and uh, Swift so I can start building things myself, but for now, the AI route is good enough. So let's start with the script I use the most. Pretty much every other day, I need to convert one image format to another. I do it so often that I want to have a fast and easy way to do it without having to open up Photoshop. And this little script does exactly that. Let's try it out on this folder. It has 177 renders, and I want to resize them and convert them from TIFF to JPEG. So I type in my command, and at this point I can either type in some extra parameters, or I can do it in a more interactive way. I usually go the interactive route. Let's drag the folder in, and now let's pick the format. Currently, I've uh, limited things to just JPEGs and WebP, the two formats I use constantly, but it can easily be extended to any image format. I pick the export quality, and then I choose whether I want to resize the images. I can skip resizing entirely and keep the original resolution by just hitting enter. For this one, let's go with a thousand pixels width. I then pick the output folder, and that's it. The script goes through the folder and converts everything inside it. If there are subfolders, it scans those too and preserves the same folder structure for the converted images. As you can see, in just a few seconds, all the files are converted. I didn't have to open an image editor, wait for it to launch, or sit through the export process. I just typed in a command and I'm ready to move on to the next task. And in case you're wondering, this script is doing none of the heavy lifting. The utilities installed through Homebrew are the ones actually responsible for the conversion. The script just has the recipe for what needs to be done, and some basic logic on how to deal with certain scenarios. For example, this script doesn't allow image upscaling. You can choose between the original resolution or something lower than that. We can see all the applications and utilities installed through Homebrew by typing brew list. ImageMagic is the application that actually does all the image conversion, and Parallel is the utility that lets us run multiple conversions at the same time. So technically, if you don't want to, you don't have to run a script. You can just call ImageMagic directly and do a conversion by typing a command like this one. The script just streamlines the process. But I can already hear the question, can't you already do that in Photoshop? Yes, you can, but with plenty of caveats. First off, Photoshop cannot compete with how lightweight the terminal is. In total, you're done in seconds. You need a second for the terminal to load and a few more to go through the conversion. But aside from that, there are a couple of other issues. Photoshop's image processor does what I need, but it doesn't support WebP. It only works with JPEG, PSDs, and TIFFs. In most cases, WebP is needed, especially when the images are meant to go on a website. 
You could build your own action that uh, saves WebP images, but actions are limited to whatever you recorded at that time. So if I recorded a resize of 1000 pixels, I cannot reuse that same action for a resize of 800 pixels. And the same applies for image compression. So you quickly end up with several different actions doing almost the same thing, but with minor variations. As you can imagine, this is not the most efficient way of doing things. And even if you do manage to build the perfect set of actions that work for you, there's still the issue of speed. As we've seen already, running things through the terminal is incredibly fast. It took less than 7 seconds to convert 177 images. Now, let's do the same with Photoshop's image processor, and you will immediately see the difference. I'll pick the JPEG option and resize to 1000 pixels, and now let's go ahead and run it. You can already tell that this will take a lot more time than 7 seconds. And that's expected. Photoshop has to deal with loading the GUI, opening and closing each file, and processing each image one by one. All of that overhead adds up. ImageMagic, on the other hand, doesn't have to deal with any of that. And with uh, Parallel, the utility that lets us use the full power of the system, we can run multiple conversions at once. So on a 10-core machine like mine, I can process 10 images at the same time, while Photoshop can only do one. Even without Parallel, the terminal is still several times faster than Photoshop, but with Parallel, the speed increase is insane. It's more than 10 times faster than Photoshop. Now, imagine doing that multiple times a week. The extra conversion time is quite noticeable. By the way, I'll have uh, all these scripts available for download on Patreon, along with instructions on how to install them and use them. So if you're interested, you can check them out there. Now, let me show you another little script I use all the time. This one deals with uh, video conversions. It basically converts all sorts of video files into an MP4 that works in Final Cut. And I'm not talking about uh, regular video files that you could just convert in Apple's uh, compressor. These files could be pretty much anything. GIFs, WebM, MKV, even old AVI files. Like before, the script itself isn't doing the conversion. It's just the recipe. The actual work is done by FFmpeg, which is another utility installed through Homebrew. So instead of me typing a command like this, I have a script that does all of that in bulk. I give it an input and output folder, I choose between two quality presets, and then I just let it do its thing. These two presets are the ones I use the most, so they're the only ones hard-coded into the script. Now, you might say, why don't you use Handbrake? It's free, and it uses FFmpeg too. I never really got into Handbrake, and what I don't like about it is how easy it is to mess things up. There were plenty of times where I accidentally changed the frame rate, the aspect ratio, or the resolution. My needs are super simple. I just want whatever resolution and frame rate the video has converted to an MP4 file ready to use in Final Cut. That's it. I don't want to filter around with uh, options or presets. I just give my script a folder and I'm done. The script also has some uh, nice little things that come in handy. For example, it checks if the video already contains an MP4 stream, and if it does, instead of re-encoding it, it just rewraps it into an MP4 container. This reduces conversion time quite a lot. WebM files usually already have an MP4 video, so the only thing that needs conversion is the audio part of the file, which is fast to do. The script also respects the structure of the original folder, so if there are any subfolders with videos in them, the same structure is recreated in the destination folder. This is what I love about the terminal and homebrew. You can build workflows that work exactly how you want them to. And as your needs evolve, you can easily extend your scripts. For example, I could streamline the process even more by automating it. I could have the scripts automatically check on a certain folder, and when a new file is added, a conversion is triggered. You can do all sorts of crazy things. 
And to prove my point, let me show you a super niche script that no programmer would ever bother writing because it solves a problem of just one person, me. As a small business, I need to track my expenses. That means I have to keep a record of my bills and I also need to upload those to an accounting platform so my accountant has access to them too. This whole process is not something difficult to do, but it's incredibly tedious and there's a lot of annoying little steps before everything is done. Let me show you. These here are the bills for electricity, internet, water, and mobile. They're not clearly named, so I first have to rename them to something that makes sense, like the name of the provider and the month the bill refers to. Then I move them to my NAS into the correct folder for each provider and filed under the right here. And after that's done, I go ahead and log the bills in the accounting software. This whole process is just annoying, especially when you have to do it every single month. So here's what I came up with. Let's first move the files in a folder. And now let's type in the command and drag the folder to get the path. The renaming process takes advantage of the fact that each service provider uses its own naming scheme. For example, the PDFs from my mobile provider always start with the word logariasmos, followed by the date. The water company starts with a date, and the electricity and internet providers just use a generic bill or invoice file name. Knowing that, we can easily build the rules to rename the files. The conversion took a second to do, and in the next step, the script asks for what I want to do with the files. I'm gonna go with yes on the transfer. I'll hit enter on the default location, since that's the one I want to use, and now I can choose to move or copy the files. Let's go with copy. And if we now go to the NAS, we can see everything is in the right place. We can already tell from the terminal, but let's double check. The electric bill is underneath the right provider, and of course the subfolder, the water bill too, and so on and so forth. The trickier part was the next one, creating the entries in the accounting software. Fortunately, that software has an API, and after some fiddling around, I managed to make it work. Just a warning though, things can go horribly wrong if you're not careful. While uh, tweaking the script to properly communicate with the accounting software, I accidentally created more than 300 duplicate entries of the same bill, and that was in a matter of seconds. It was scary to see and I had to clean up all that mess manually, so here's my advice. Before you do anything drastic, just double and triple check what you're about to do. Thankfully, everything works as expected now, so let's go through that process too. Instead of uploading all of them, let's just do one. As you can see, I can choose which ones I want to upload. The water bill is automatically excluded because that's how I've set things up. Let's go with uh, option one. I enter the amount, pick the category, which I always have as office expenses by default, and that's it. The entry is created on the platform. If I didn't have to explain the whole process, this thing would probably take less than a minute to do. As you can see, you can do anything you can imagine. So, now that you have a better idea of what's possible, let me quickly show you the very basics. This is not gonna be a tutorial, I just want to help you connect some more of the puzzle pieces, and then, if you're interested, you can start exploring on your own. So, the first thing you want to do is go to Homebrew's website and copy the command right in the front page. Paste it into the terminal, hit enter, and Homebrew will download and install. Once that's done, you can start installing other applications. For example, if you want to download uh, ImageMagic, the image conversion utility we saw in the first script, you just type this. And it will start downloading and installing. Here's some more cool stuff you can download. You can manage almost everything on your Mac using the Terminal and Homebrew, and if you want to see what else you can install, just go to this page. 
Now, let's talk about custom scripts. You can ask ChatGPT or Claude to help you write the code, but what do you do once you actually have a script? I have a dedicated folder where all my custom scripts live. It's easier to manage than having files scattered across different locations. To run a script, let's say it's Python, you would normally type Python, followed by the path and the name of the file. But doing that every time gets annoying, so instead you can turn the script into a command, just like you saw me do with my own. To achieve that, you need to do two things. You first uh, make the script executable using this command. This allows the system to run it directly. Once you do that, the file icon will change to indicate it's now an executable. Next, you need to tell your system where your scripts live by updating your zshrc configuration file. That way, the terminal knows to look in the scripts folder and run the script just by typing its name. You can update it easily through the terminal with an editor like nano. Then add a line like this. Save, exit, and reload zshrc so it's ready to use without restarting the terminal. I know, it's a lot to unpack, but that's basically the gist of it. You install tools through Homebrew, you define where your scripts live, you make them executable, and then you're off to the races. So, now that you've got a better understanding of uh, how things work, take your time exploring the tools available, and think about things in your daily workflow that you would love to speed up or eliminate. One of the easiest wins is managing your applications through Homebrew. It lets you install, update and remove apps without dealing with the DMG files, installers, or leftover junk when you uninstall an app. For example, you can install Blender with this command. And you can update it with this one. Or if you've installed multiple applications, you can just update them all at once. You can follow the same procedure for many other applications, including the ones downloaded from the App Store. Anyway, I don't want to overwhelm you, so I'll wrap it up here and I'll let you explore further at your own pace. And if you want to start experimenting with uh, ready-made scripts, just go to my Patreon page where I'll have uh, some of the scripts you saw in the video, along with extra homebrew tips and tricks. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.